Hello everyone, Mr. Love here, coming here from the diesel lab. Today we're just going to show you quickly how to remove, inspect, and reinstall valves, the cylinder head. We're just using this cylinder head here off of an ISL, uh, ISL Cummins. So um, this one here, you'll see it has two intake and two exhaust for each cylinder. Um, it's very important that you keep track of which valve came out of which cylinder, out of which spot. So these ones make it a little more confusing because you have two intakes and two exhaust. So you definitely don't want to mix up the intake and exhaust when you put it back together, but you also don't want to mix up the two intake valves. So always mark everything carefully. We have a bunch of pieces of wood with different holes drilled in it. So you can keep track of everything as you take it apart. Make sure you always put the same part back in the hole you brought it out of. Okay, so we have a couple different styles here of spring compressors. This one here is the air one we're going to be using today. We also have a couple manual styles that basically work the same way, just not as good as our air one. We have a little manual pry one. We have one for tight spots on older stuff. But today, we're going to just be focusing on the air one that we're all going to be using to take our valves out. It works good on our compact diesel engines all the way up to our monstrous big ones that we have here. A few safety things. We're going to be working with springs that have quite a bit of pressure on them. We should always have on our safety glasses, but definitely make sure you and everyone around you has your, your safety glasses on over their eyes. We have our tool here. We're going to just take our shop air, hook up to it. We have two different triggers on here. If I hit the one trigger, the piston comes out. You can see that it moves pretty quick, so you want to have everything lined up where it needs to be. Then you release it, and it sucks back in. So top trigger kicks out, bottom trigger sucks it back in. We have a little disc on there. The disc just sticks on there, so don't be hitting the trigger. That disc will fly off. Always make sure that's on there. On our other end here, we have an adjustable little C part here that's going to sit down tightly on our over our spring there. You don't want it too loose on there and you don't want it too tight. You want it just perfect on there. There's a little adjustment here you could turn to get it to where you need it to be. So we'll make sure this part's on here. So what's happening here, I'll turn sideways here so you can see. So on this back part here, you can see this flat disc is going up against our valve. On the other side here, the little C part is going to be over the spring. So we're going to get everything lined up. It's going to be on there nice and straight. Make sure it's tight, like we said right here. And just pull the trigger. Okay. Now well, here comes the part where you want to be quick, but try not to lose anything. So we have two little keepers in here. So little keepers. They're very easy to lose, very easy to fall off of there. So want to make sure you keep track of those. We just had one fall before, we'll have to grab that afterwards here. So now we have the keepers off of there. Now we're going to release it nice and slow. Okay, so we got it released. We'll pull our tool out of the way. Keep a hand on all this stuff here so it doesn't go flying on us. Now we can pull that off. You can see we have our spring here. We have our spring. We have our little flat disc that goes on top. We have our little keepers, two of those. And now we can just push our valve right out. So we're going to push our valve out. Comes right out the other side there. See that one's a little rusty. You can see where it seats on there. We have rust around there. And we have a nice clean seat where it sits on there. So we'll go over valves later on. This is just the removal and installation of it. So to reinstall it, just push your valve back through. Remember, make sure it's the one that came out of there. We're going to take our spring, set it back over there. Make sure our little disc is on there also. Okay, so this is where it gets a little tricky. There's also adjustment this way. You can turn this spindle here to bring it in and out. So sometimes you'll need to turn this a little bit 
when you have it out to put it back on. We'll get everything lined up again. I'm just running my hand adjustment back out so it touches the valve here for me. So I'm gonna to touch it against the valve. Now I'm gonna pull the trigger again. It's gonna collapse that spring. Again, we gotta make sure everything's nice and straight here. So you see I'm back here where the keepers go on. So I've got my two keepers now. One fell on the floor there. So these are very easy to lose, especially when you're taking it apart and reassembling. So you can see on the keeper here, there's a little notch right here. It's also a notch on our valve stem. These little keepers are tapered downwards. So if you put them together, they're tapered. You want the taper then going towards the spring. Okay, so since these little keepers are so easy to fall, we're gonna take our grease gun here. We're just gonna get a smidge of grease, which makes it nice and sticky for us. So we'll just put a smidge of grease on our little keepers here. On each one, remember the taper goes towards the spring. We'll put it on there. We'll make sure it's in the notch really good. That grease is going to kind of just let it stick on there for us. A little grease on our next one here. So get our next one on there. Okay, so again, push them together. Make sure they're all on there good. Make sure both the tapers are going towards the spring. Get it on there backwards, it's just going to shoot off on you. If it's not in the little groove, it's just going to shoot off on you. So. Now we're going to release it. This is the most dangerous part. So if we mess something up here, our spring could go flying on us. So you want to release it. We're still going to keep the tool on there. We'll give it a visual inspection, make sure everything looks normal. Sometimes you'll have it where one keeper stays on, the other one pops out halfway on you. If that happens quickly, you know, release that spring tension again. Collapse the spring so you can get that keeper off of there. So let's take it apart one more time. So we just squeeze it. Take our little keepers off. Just watch your fingers. Okay. Released it again. It all comes apart pretty quick. We can pull our valve out. So you can see on our valve here, we have a little groove right here. The little part that sticks out on our keeper. It's a little sticky now with the grease on there. So the part that goes on the keeper there, you have to make sure it's locked in that groove real good. So make sure it's locked in that groove, make sure the taper's going down towards the spring. There's quite a bit of tension on these springs. We have our little spring tester right over here. So we'll actually see what the tension on this one is. So just here we have our spring tester. Usually in the books, it'll tell you a certain height. So at this one, we'll say, we'll say at 30 millimeters high, when the spring collapses, it should have so much tension on it. So what we do, we crank this down till it says 30 millimeters. And you can see on here that we're at 150 pounds of pressure. So 150 pounds on the spring right here at the way it's supposed to be. Okay, so we'll just put this back together here real quick. Okay, we have everything all hooked up. Okay, our spring goes on first. Our little cap for the spring goes on there. Just find everything over. Remember, make sure everything's lined up nice and straight before you pull the trigger. Happens pretty quick. We're going to pull the trigger, collapse everything there. Okay, so there are little keepers, put a little dab of grease on them. That's going to hold them on there for us. Otherwise, you're going to be keep dropping them. So always make sure you put a little dab of grease on there. A little grease isn't going to hold any, hurt anything. It's going to hold it on there nice. Okay, so we got that on there. Definitely one thing you don't want to do is hang on to it with your fingers here while you release that. Chances are it's gonna pinch your finger really bad, you know, with a couple hundred pounds of pressure. So make sure they're on there, make sure everything's lined up good, then take your hands right away. 
and we're going to release it. Before we remove the tool, we're always going to inspect it, make sure it's seated in there good. If it's seated in there good, we're good to go. Good to remove our tool, go on to the next ones. Okay, so that's all there is to it. So it goes by pretty quick. The biggest thing is stay safe. Don't be pointing the springs towards anyone while you're taking them apart. Always make sure they're towards a wall or something else. Um, make sure the keepers, you keep track of them. They're very easy to lose. Make sure you keep the valves in the correct order. So this one's a little harder because we have two intake, two exhaust for each cylinder and there's six cylinders. So we have 24 valves here. So a lot to keep track of. But we do have pieces of wood, like we said, we can keep track of them a little bit easier, or you can put tape on each one, lay them out, or just do one at a time. Hey, that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay safe out there.